Back in pre-calculus, and for a lot of us, uh, even before then, we learned this formula. The amount of money in a bank at time t is equal to the principal, that's the amount you invest, e to the rt. And that's only if the interest is compounded continuously. There are other scenarios. You might have in, uh, interest compounded weekly or monthly or annually. But if the interest is compounded continuously, this is the formula that you use. If you know how much time is going to pass and how much the interest rate is, you can figure out how much is going to be in the account after that amount of time. The principal being the amount that you initially invest. We're now in a position to talk about where this formula comes from. Let's say that you invest P dollars and you have an interest rate of R percent. A of T is the amount in the account after T years. Now T is always uh, measured in years. That's traditional. It's conventional. It could be measured in something else, but if we just state at the outset that it will be measured in years, then everybody agrees to that, then we don't have to define it every single time. T could be 0 0.5. It could be half a year. It could be six months, but it's in years, not, not months or days or decades, whatever. So I've got P for principal, R for rate, and A for the amount at the end of the cycle, whatever that cycle happens to be. What we're interested in here is how the amount in the account is changing over time. So we have a ratio of differentials, and that's going to be equal to the rate times the amount in the account at any given point. So if you invest, say, $100 and you have a 5% interest rate, then at the end of a year, you'll have $105. Well, that could be 105 then, and you take the interest rate and apply it again. The change in the amount over time is the rate times the amount in the account at that particular moment. Well, we also know something about what happens at the beginning. We know that the amount in the account at time zero is equal to P. So what we have here is a very simple initial value problem. Let's see how we might go about solving this. It looks like this is separable. I could also treat it as a, I could also use an um, integrating factor, but it's separable equation, so I'm going to treat it that way. I will multiply both sides by dt, which cancels it on that side, and then I'll also divide both sides by a. So I have 1 over a dA equals r dt. Now it's take, worth taking a moment and thinking about what each of these letters means. t means time. We've established that that's going to be in years. a means amount. It's an amount after time t. So this is going to be a function of t. a is a function of t. r is just a constant. right? It's the rate that will be given in any particular uh, instance, any particular situation. So r is a constant. So when I integrate it with respect to t, it's just going to be rt. Let's go ahead and set that up. The integral of both sides, I get the natural log of a equals rt plus c. All right, now I'll exponentiate both sides, and I get a equals e to the rt plus c. So a equals k times e to the rt. k is comes from this, this can be written as e to the rt times e to the c, and e to the c is a constant, so I've called it k. Now, now what I'm going to do is apply the, the initial conditions here. I've said that the amount at time zero is just the amount that you initially invest in the account. So let's put this up here. A of zero, which happens to be P, is going to be equal to K times E to the R times zero. T is zero. This is when time is zero, the very beginning of the account. That gives us P equals K times 
e to the 0, which is 1. In other words, k equals p, and I can write my formula, which is here, now this way. a of t equals p for k, e to the rt. And there you have it. That's where this formula comes from. Now, this situation, or this formula rather, can be can be applied to a lot of different situations. Uh, this is the uh, the formula that we use when you invest money and the bank pays you a rate over a certain amount of time. But if you borrow money, this is the amount that you borrow. This is the rate of interest that you pay on that loan. And this is the amount that you pay over time. This is the total amount that you end up paying for the loan. You pay back the principal, but you also pay some interest. But when I look at this, I also see, for example, n of t equals n sub 0 e to the kt, which is a biology application. This says the number of individuals in a population will be equal to the number of individuals at the start times e to the kt, where k is the growth rate, r is the growth rate, the interest rate, k is the growth rate, t is time. So this is really not uh, an unusual formula to see. These, th these look identical to me. I know we use different letters here for a different sort of discipline, right? Biology versus finance, but they really are the same thing. Now, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. Financial applications are probably my least favorite application of mathematics. It's just me. It's just how I roll. Uh, I like biological applications. I love geology. I think the, the, the exponential or actually logarithmic um, model for earthquakes is absolutely fascinating, both from a geological perspective and from a mathematical perspective. But finance, meh, I don't really care. It, some people do, and some people need to, because we need those people in our society as well. But I'm not one of those people. So I'm not going to spend much more time on this. Uh, the rest of this problem, the rest of this example is worked out for you in your textbook. Um, well, actually, I've worked out the example, but they go on to talk about uh, how you can extend it to deposits and withdrawals, accrual of interest, dividends, and so on. So take a read of that. Uh, I don't even think there are terribly many exercises in the textbook that deal with the financial applications. Let me see. I'll scan it very quickly here. Oh, number six, number five, number six. I'm on page 47. Number seven, number eight. And that's it. There's really only those four problems that deal with this particular um, focus, this financial focus. So I'm going to leave it there and we'll just call it good for compound interest.